Hi family, as always, super to be back with you. This is the second time I'm doing this video. The other one cut me off. So we got to hit it straight. Heavenly Father, thank you for your presence with us. Please bless these moments. For Christ's sake, amen. All right, so part two, clear. Readers, we pick back up the narrative. Clear was a pseudonym I was using. However, Clarissa gave me permission to use her real name. There would be an interlude of three weeks before the adventure resumed. It was a rainy evening. Not an evening. One would choose to go walking. However, Derek Lynn and I, to, De Lynn and I decided to go to Browns Beach for a walk. We hoped to see Claire. It started to rain when we arrived at the beach and I lost the zest for walking. Derek Lynn was determined not to let any rain put her off her goal. Finally, she coaxed me out of the car. There we were, two lone figures along the beach, uh, walking along the beach under the canopy of a big black umbrella. I told Dexy that I doubted that we would see our friend. A surprise awaited us. As we approached clear spot, something looked startlingly different. The former chaos had a distinctive look of order about it. I saw a figure bobbing up and down amidst the remaining debris. The person appeared to be sorting and packing items. The more controlled and clearly defined arrangement of the former melee was quite surprising. Things were heaped together in neat little bundles. There was Clarissa, Claire, with a big supermarket trolley bag loaded with stuff. Approaching her, I said, I thought I'd never see you again. Her face looked somewhat bright and happy. I had been to the beach on two previous occasions, but she had not been there. Then she poured out a most incredible story. She told me that she had seen the social worker in Bridgetown. He told her that he would try to, um, to do something for her. About two weeks earlier, she said that she was there on the beach, an evening, and a man came riding up on a motorbike. He approached her and gave her some keys and told her, these are the keys for the apartment you are to live in. The man explained to her how to get to her new location. Having told her that, he then gave her the bunch of keys and left. She was, of course, all agog, incredible, unbelievable, she had those very keys dangling from her dress and she shook them at me. I stood transfixed. I honestly could not believe my ears. Is this what you would call a miracle? The tears immediately welled up in my eyes and goosebumps crept their way over my body. God has indeed worked a miracle for you, I told her. You need to give your life to him. She told me that when the man gave her the keys, she said, it must be the mother and the daughter. The mother and the daughter. <laughs> and she repeated this in a kind of daze. What a turnaround to a situation that could have ended tragically had she obeyed the first impression she received. You know what that first impression was. Thankfully, she did not. Her breakthrough was nearer than she could ever have imagined. That was not all. She also told me that her, daughter called, her daughters called her and told her that they loved her. Another twist in circumstances. It seemed so unreal. The radiance on her face and the sincerity she gazed into my eyes told me that it was no fairy tale. We hugged, prayed, and cried again. It was distinctly a deja vu experience. I offered to help her carry a motley array of things over, but she politely refused. This diminutive but fiercely determined woman would push her car right along the road. Giving me directions to find her new home, we parted. As Darklin and I walked away, I glanced back, fixing the scene in my mind's eye. The spiritual significance was indeed monumental. 
great material for a human in interest to read, I reflected. Why was I suddenly catapulted into Claire's life? It happened because I turned back. Did I tell myself to turn back or did someone else guide me? Gotta stop it here. See you next time.